That's it, the river's dried up. What's going on guys? Noah here with Northern Scavenger. It is late March here in Nova Scotia. And I'm here with my buddy Matt and we are paddling the Nine Mile River. This is a river I want to do for a while now. It's definitely water level dependent. So that's why we decided to go so early this year. We're looking at about nine degrees today. I have my wetsuit just in case we need to get in the water to do some, uh, some tree pruning for any sweepers. The Nine Mile River is a 16 kilometer stretch of water that sneaks through the west end of Halifax, Nova Scotia. From the put-in, you could drive 15 minutes and be in the core of downtown eating gourmet sushi and sipping on cold craft beer. The Nine Mile was once a flourishing salmon river, but has since been long forgotten as urban development, wastewater discharge, and a municipal landfill encroaches on this wild river. Typical to Nova Scotia, the Nine Mile is a shallow rocky river made up of chutes and pools and is seen on a map as blue lines connecting small ponds. The river is not paddled often and after being smacked by Hurricane Dorian, we can expect a lot of sweepers and blowdowns along the way. The plan is to paddle the full river in one day and make it all the way down to Shad's Bay on the ocean. So right off the bat we realized that this was going to be a very shallow river and we had to start off with a big portage because there's already a sweeper crossing the river. In these forests where there's a lot of disturbances like hurricanes and windstorms, there's a lot of these bushy trees. This is because when a big tree dies it creates a space for new growth to occur. That tree's unfortunate. Alright, before we get too deep into the storyline, in the beginning of the trip, we met up with our friends Tristan and Yan. We did not plan to meet up with them, it was just a random occurrence, especially in March to see these guys, but we were glad to have them along. The guys took a route that really exposed their side of their canoe. They left the main current line to chase an eddy, and it almost got them, but they recovered. Seeing them, we knew we wanted to stay river right. I saw a line there, it was a little bony, but we just had to power through. So on most of these blue lines in Nova Scotia, you're gonna get really good at lining your canoe because in most sets you don't want to portage because the forest is so thick and you also can't paddle a lot of these sections because of obstacles like sweepers or rocks that could get you into a situation that you do not want to be in. Shore, you want to go like inch to the left of it. Back paddle. Back paddling is one of my favorite moves to do on whitewater rivers. By back ferrying, you slow down and you can maneuver to the left and right to find your spot. At 12 o'clock, let's just bang right through. Alright. We got to a set and we saw a line that looked good. 
The problem was there was one tree that was hanging over that would catch you if you were to hit it. And it was right in the spot where we wanted to be. So I did a move where I wouldn't recommend to do, but I felt comfortable climbing up a tree to trim that branch. We get to a set that had a decent drop on it. It's hard to tell from this, but this tongue was probably only six inches deep. Matt and I decided to skip this feature, but Tristan and Yan decided to run it. Covered. Boat's dry. Yeah, there was one point where you were still hanging on it, but we were like totally sideways and was filling up, and I thought, no way that we're going in the next rapid. So I jumped out. <laughs> that was a good idea. Yeah. I, I thought you were going to recover for a second there. I almost did, and the rope yeah. the rope was bound, yeah. so I only had about six feet on it. Yeah, and then when I, when I saw you jump and start swimming, I thought, yeah. okay. I didn't know what to do with the camera. I'm like, I want to film this, but I got to save them. <laughs> well, you put it. You, you did. You did what you could. Yeah. Approaching a very shallow set here, we didn't really know what line. We're going over it. We slowly made our way down by back paddling back paddle. and ferrying from the left to right. You can do that by pointing the stern of your canoe in the direction that you want to go and the current tacks you across the river. Depending on the strength of the current, you would open or close that angle. Uh, you think we can make that? Looks pretty bony. We have to draw hard to, to get around that. Draw. Nice. Back pedal. Well done, man. That was perfect. The one almost grazed those trees, eh? With these shallow rivers, you want to back paddle to move from left to right. And to get over ledges, you want to do strong forward paddles. So it's a combination of becoming slower or faster than the current. Here it looks like river left would be our best option, but there was a shelf that we would not be able to get over. So we decided to take this really sneaky route to the right. I feel like this is almost scout worthy though. Because once you're out there, we're going to want to do the entire thing, I think. Looking down river, there was a set that looked a little more sporty, 
and in situations where you don't know, it's just better to just go. Just get out of your canoe, check it out, and see if you can do it. When I'm landing a river, I typically like to have a 30 foot rope on both the stern and the bow. That length allows for enough space that you can really stretch your canoe, but not too much rope that you're getting tangled in it. Yo, let go. Finally, after what seemed like a lot of hard work, we found a section of river that actually had this nice current, and we could just paddle along and hit swifts for a good 200 yards. See that rocket 12? We're gonna have to go off of it. Then draw. Sections like this, you really gotta cherish. It's simple things like this, you learn to appreciate. As you can see where the sun is right now, the sun is setting. This got a little sketchy for us. We were about halfway down the trip and we realized it was about five o'clock at night. That's it, the river's dried up. We started this trip at 10.30 in the morning and the sun sets at eight o'clock at night and only being halfway done, we did not know if we were gonna get out before dark and none of us brought any stuff to stay the night. On the river got a little more tense we did not know what we still had to hit and we knew the sun was only going to be out for a few more hours For me, this was the oh shit moment. It was seven o'clock at night and all we could see was heavy white water with a shoreline that was just full of trees. We had to line the boats in some pretty fast moving current that was very cold. There was a sweeper that was crossing the river 
and it almost looked like we had no option. Why don't you jump on shore there and I'll bring you down. One of our thoughts was to cross the river, but the current was so strong, and if we didn't make it, we'd be going right into that tree. In these situations, you just gotta keep moving forward and take your time and just hope and pray something comes to your mind that you think will be a good option. This is where the river gods blessed us with a little gold nugget. Behind that fallen tree was a huge tree well. And it worked as the perfect little sneak route to get around that obstacle. Whoa, this is pretty cool. features on the other side of the sweeper there was a long beefy set of rapids Forward, hard. being so late in the day none of us wanted to scout it and we decided to run it relatively blind stay, stay straight slow down back paddle Straight, let's go. Yep. Beauty. Finally, after all that uncertainty of not knowing if we were gonna make it out on time, the current slows down and we're able to paddle peacefully all the way down to Shad's Bay. Just in the nick of time. Dude, this is Shad's Bay. Oh, baby! Just in, just in the nick of time, too. This is just as the sun goes oh down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we God, made we it. Lived. Oh, that was so good. It was a, a healthy amount of fear that we weren't going to make it. So we barely made it out of there. The sun is setting. It's probably getting close to 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. And we have made it to Shad's Bay. What a rush. It was quite a roller coaster of a day. A lot of ups and downs, a lot of hard white water some heavy lining, but we got out. Beautiful day on the river. Beautiful day on the river. Oh man, it's good to be here. Life goes on. I had my doubts. So did I. Yeah. I didn't know if we were gonna make this one. There's a magic river flowing in a cave. She gives me real love all the time. She gives me real love. All that matters now